Oh, all right, problem six. We have a newspaper in Germany that reported that the more semesters needed to complete an academic program at the university, the greater the starting salary in the first year of the job. The report was based on a study that used a random sample of 24 people who had recently completed an academic program. Information was collected on the number of semesters each person in the sample needed to complete the program and the starting salary in thousands of euros for the first year of the job. The data are shown in the scatter plot below. Okay, so number of semesters across, starting salary vertically. So does the scatter plot support the newspaper report about the number of semesters and starting salary? Justify your answer. All right, so um, essentially this is just um, assessing if you understand that this graph shows, you know, um, or can show the, the trend or an association between two variables. We call, you know, the X variable, the exclamatory variable, and the Y variable, the response variable. So we want to see does like, you know, does the exclamatory variable have some effect or does it appear to have an effect on the exclamatory variable? And it seems that it does. It seems like the more semesters you um, take, the greater your starting salary. As the number of semesters increase, the starting salary increases. So we would say it's our like answer would be essentially like, yeah, because there um because there's there seems to be a positive association between these two variables. Now let's look at part B. Let me write that actually this. Because there appears to be a positive association. Because there appears to be. A positive association between the variables. <clears throat> All right, part B. This table shows the computer output from a linear regression analysis on the data. So we want to identify the slope of the least squares regression line and interpret the slope in context. Okay, so essentially this, you know, kind of like just the form in, um, an algebra, you know, the y equals mx plus b, but in a stats class, it's usually y equals a plus bx, or more specifically, y hat. The predicted y value is equal to the y-intercept plus the slope b times x, or the exponential variable. Now, in this case, the, the a is our constant. So the A would be that 34.018. And then the B or the slope would be that 1.1594. So we would write this as Y hat being equal to 34.018 plus 1.1594X. Now, what is this like, what does this mean in context of the problem? Well, essentially, this is them saying that the, the predicted Y value or the predicted starting salary is expected to increase by an average of 1,115 or 1,159.44 or 1, euros for each, for each additional semester that, um, that a, you know, a graduate takes at the university. So here it is, I wrote it on this one, something like this. So for each additional semester, the predicted starting salary increases by 1159.4 euros. So essentially they want to, they want, you want to show them that you understand that the slope represents the change in the rep, the change in the response variable over the change in the exponential variable. And we like you to go by units of one for change in X. Right, let's, now let's look at the back. We got going on in the back. All that paper is, oh, my papers are fumbling over here. All right, so here we got an independent researcher that received data from the newspaper and conducted a new analysis by separating the data into three groups based on the major. So this data is based on the major of the person, of each person. A revised scatter plot identifying the major of each person is shown here. Okay, so here we can see the, um, the business majors over here and the physics in the middle and the chemistry up here. 
So based on the people in the sample, describe the association between starting salary and the number of semesters for business majors. So focusing on this group, let's put a B here for business. And I see a P here for physics and a C for chemistry. So we're just only caring about this group. So this is what's interesting. Um, within just this group, as the number of semesters increases, the, the um, starting salary decreases because you can like essentially see this trend line that you know has like a negative sign slope. And in fact, like all of them kind of do that. So it's something to definitely um, consider. So we could basically say that um, basically say that. Um, there's, there seems to be a strong, so, okay, let's, let's actually remember this acronym when we're talking about scatter plots, DOFs, direction, outliers, form, shape. So direction, outliers, form, shapes. Make sure you address those four characteristics to get full credit. So address the direction, which is um, negative. Any outliers? Nothing really. Form, we either say nonlinear or it seems to be linear and the strength. So medium, strong, weak, that sort of thing. They're not too strict on that, but they just want to, they want to see that you address these four things. So I'll probably say there should be a strong negative association between number of semesters and starting salaries. And the business majors, um, again, the greater number of semesters needed for the business majors, the lower the starting salaries they tend to have. Let me put that down there. Right now, D, based on the people in the sample, compare the median starting salaries for the three majors. Well, well I don't want to give it away yet. So the median, again, the middle value. The median starting salary, but we're looking at it like um, vertically. So maybe the median starting salary for business majors would be something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, something like right, right in here. Come on, let me... Let me try to make it a little better. Four above, four below, horizontal line. One, two, three, four, one, two, so this one, the median here for, for physics, and like the median here for chem. So it seems like the business majors have the lowest median starting salary at about 30, like at 38,000 euros. Then physics majors come in second, and chem majors are at the highest at 55,000 euros, it seems. Now, so based on this graph, based on like now we have um, some more, you know, detailed information about the, you know, scatter plot. Like, how could the new super report be modified to get a better description of the relationship between the number of semesters and the starting salary for the people in the sample? So again, with these problems, always just think regular li real life, because that's always the best way to address stats, because that's what it is, that, you know, studying data in real life. And so what would be, you know, smart and not, to, to, you know, not misleading would be to essentially make it clear to the people looking at the data or reading this in the newspaper that, you know, it, the, what really affects your starting salary is the major. Like business is in third place, followed by physics and then by chemistry. And that actually, in fact, the, number, the more semesters you take, to do your to complete your degree, it seems to have you have a, a, a lower starting salary. It's just that the chemistry majors overall have longer salaries or have longer, have longer, you know, take a longer time to complete their major. So that's why, you know, they tend to be the highest in turn, or like there seems they seem to have the highest number of semesters and the highest starting salaries. But again, within each group, it seems that the more semesters you take, the lower your starting salary tends to be. So it's definitely something we want that we would like to, we should we, we should address um, and sh and should point out to people reading this so that again we don't get like misled by this because um and you know knowing that knowing that can make affect your decision in college because again this is real data all right so that's all there is to it so I hope that helps all right good luck peoples.